スーパーランダムジャパン。なに Well, one of the best shows on TV has finally come to an end, and so I'm gonna give my final thoughts, thoughts of which nobody surely cares about, but hey, we're gonna do it anyway. So, I got a lot of flack from my original video from the premiere episodes of Shogun, even though I claimed it was almost perfect. I dare nitpick about something, being the language, which I'll briefly address again in a bit, but let's just say that got better quickly as the series progressed. There will be more nitpicking, as no show is perfect, however, I would first like to explain all the ways in which this show is incredible and a must watch no matter what. First off, the show is a masterclass in direction, costume design, and realism. The fact that they had roles for master of gestures, to even teach the Japanese actors how to be more Japanese to match the era, is incredible. Even experts in historical weapons, fashion, etc., had to stretch to find inaccuracies. Plus, much of the story is historically accurate while not claiming to be. Most characters, including the Western protagonist John Blackthorne, are based on real people. Lord Toranaga himself was based on the most famous shogun of all, Tokugawa Ieyasu. However, plenty of people have made videos on that, so I'll save time and spare you unless requested. So, onto the action, or, interestingly, the lack thereof. While the fight scenes were few and far between, the scenes that did occur were suspenseful and well choreographed. The key, though, was in the overall suspense and intensity of the story and the characters, and not so much the action. There were far fewer fight scenes than many would expect of a story like this, including the one that eventually leads to the main warlord, Toranaga, to victory and becoming the Shogun. Alright, so I lied, and I will briefly mention real life characters. As I just mentioned, Toranaga was based on the famous shogun Tokugawa Ieyasu. However, the most famous battle that led to his victory, a battle at Sekigahara, doesn't actually take place in the series. They allude to it and show how he masterfully maneuvers the political world to set up his victory there without actually showing the battle itself. Many have compared the show to Game of Thrones, the risks that leaders take, and the overall chess like maneuvering the various characters must act with makes the series highly compelling from beginning to end, without needing to focus on drawn out battles and expensive action scenes. Also, like Game of Thrones, there are real stakes at hand, and important characters can die, avoiding the trope of plot armor, as they say in the industry. And while some people might have found the pace of the show a bit slow at times, it shows that the series is made for people who like to think or at least not have their intelligence questioned. The viewer is not spoon fed information, nor does it focus on straightforward dialogue or battle scenes to drive the plot. Also, I don't think many people realize just how subtle the actual Japanese language and culture is itself. In nuanced speech, and even the time and care Japanese people go to perfecting even simple daily chores. Especially the higher class a citizen is, the more they and the members of their household must uphold honor and tradition. The tone of your voice or stature of your body could cause a misunderstanding or show disrespect. That's another thing the show is great at showing. While scenes like the one involving killing off your bloodline was a bit rare and extreme, honor among Japanese, especially in those days, was extremely important. Even in current Japan, there's a phrase, the nail that sticks out gets hammered, and essentially gives off the idea that everything is for the greater good of the collective and not oneself. Again, though, even among two lovers or even strangers, small gestures can show great respect or disrespect. For example, the use of the word sama is a name suffix, like san or chan, sensei, kun, senpai, kohai, etc. Sama is the highest level and thus used for people above your status. Blackthorn mistakenly calls the gardener of his new estate sama and embarrasses him. Mariko quickly explains the faux pas. The Spaniard Rodriguez even mocks them to Blackthorn, stating, Obviously, body language is just as important, such as showing aggression, bowing, etc. One of the episodes I myself found to be a bit dragging at times involved a tea ceremony which, in itself, I loved and respected very much. The first Hollywood depiction of the Japanese tea ceremony I remember happened in Karate Kid Part 2 and captivated me even then when I was really young especially as it was a more playful western look into the time-held ceremony. I learned in college that my university had a dedicated Japanese tea room in which I again learned the intricacies of the Japanese tea ceremony. In Shogun, Buntaro did his best to impress his now estranged wife Mariko to win back her affections, and while it fell on deaf ears, it no less showed how important perfecting minuscule tasks is. Sadly, I think this may have been lost on some Shogun viewers who may have been waiting for action after a couple of lackluster episodes. However, I like to believe that people were simply mesmerized, as they likely were with the rest of the series. The characters themselves are the biggest draw of the series. Aside from the three main protagonists, there's the cold heartedness of Lady Ochiba, mother to the air, and the double agent Yabushige. There's the main antagonist Ishido, and a huge ensemble of characters that all have a role to play, down to the fishermen and priests. 
One of my favorites is Fuji, a recent widow forced to be Blackthorn's consort who is always poised and fearless, yet dons the most precious smile and innocence when she's at ease. Let me know who your favorite character is in the comments. Shogun has a way of drawing you in and making you want to understand the world and the characters, especially as Japanese people in general are artful in their way of hiding, yet subtly displaying emotion and purpose. Again, I really think this show is a rare type of show that respects the intelligence of the average viewer. Obviously, no show is perfect, however, and so I'll get into my very brief nitpicky gripes. Like I said in my first video about the series, I was a bit confused by the language depiction. I mean, I understood it overall, but... In the show, every non-Japanese speaker spoke English, though John Blackthorne was essentially the only Englishman. Spanish and Portuguese people spoke English with their own accents, which made me wonder mildly whether they were in fact all speaking Portuguese or not, especially since Blackthorne can speak all the languages. It took me a bit out of the moment, too, when they would ask someone if they spoke Portuguese but ended up speaking English. This was only a minor complaint, but could have led to the show being closer to perfect. Ideally, they would have spoken Old Dutch, Latin, etc. But again, it's a small complaint that I ended up getting reamed for in my last Quick Impressions video anyway. So let's move on. Some people commented on the color design of the show, and more importantly, the interesting fact I overlooked that it's always cloudy, or smoky, or dreary, whatever. This is surely because most of the show, especially coastal areas, were shot in Canada. When living in Japan, I rarely to never encountered fog, cloudiness, and rain maybe, but not fog or dreariness like that. They left out much of the beauty of the country by setting the scenes in a gloomy undertone. I understand it was likely for artistic direction, too. My final complaint has actually been one I thought long and hard about and changed my mind. I was originally disappointed that we never got to see the war at Sekigahara and Toranaga becoming Shogun. However, after re-watching the finale several times, I grew to like the approach they took. First of all, James Clavell's original book never had the war, and second of all, this was a more artistic approach. It not only shows that the series is about the people and not the outcome, but also alludes to the idea of destiny. Toranaga is so sure about his path to victory that everything in the series has unfolded as he planned. We as the viewer can only assume his visions of the future will come true too. We are in his world. Those of us who demand closure can be comforted by the fact that we know how the real life events turned out. Those of us who wish it to be fantasy world can continue to do so. At the end of the day, it saves the production studio time and money and leaves the ending open to interpretation. Either way, I still think Shogun is a must watch for any viewer, and a pleasant treat for the current landscape of film and television showmaking. I'm sure it'll be nominated for buckets of awards and likely win most that it's nominated for. Hiroyuki Sanada has done a wonderful job of bringing Japanese culture to more audiences worldwide. A show like this comes around only once in decades, don't miss your chance to check it out. If you're searching for other unknown Japanese movies and TV shows, or news and culture related videos, etc., feel free to like, subscribe, and follow this channel. Thanks as always for watching. Later.